the zombie deer disease. A lot of you have seen it uh, published. You know, the article has floated around social media. Uh, seen it in the news. And I want to touch base on uh, a couple of my thoughts about that. So yeah, we all saw this article that came out that uh, there may have been more than one, but the title was something like the zombie deer disease. Um, I had co-workers that brought it up. I had family members that saw it. And, and I read the article, and of course it involved chronic wasting disease, or CWD. My first comment is this. If you have to call something, if you have the title zombie in a publication or a news article, it means one of two things. It means either we all better grab our bug out bags and hope that there's not fast zombies, because let's be honest, we're not gonna make it if there's fast zombies. Or, your article, the data in your article is so boring or anticlimactic or non-convincing that you have to use the word zombie in the title to get people to read it and to predispose them to thinking that it's a big deal. If you just said an accurate title of very small percentage of deer have this disease that can be fatal. If you put that in a title, nobody's going to read it. But the reality is that's an accurate title. But you have to put zombie deer disease to get people to think, oh man, this is bad. Then when they click on it, they read, oh, it's fatal. Then they see, oh, it's a percentage of deer. Wow, that's that's unbelievable. You also have to forgive me, I'm kind of under the weather, so my, it's kind of hard for me to talk. <clears throat> so that's, that's the publication, the journalism side of things that really irritated me when I saw that. It's just a normal um, media trying to um, exemplify things and get you to click on their article when they really don't even have a story. So, on the chronic wasting disease, another thing that's been in the news here very recently, and I'm sure uh, most of you have heard of it, CWD. Yes, it's a, it's a real disease. Is it different than scapees or scrapees or whatever in sheep? I don't know. It's very similar. Um, one thing they've kind of discovered is where they test for it, they find it. Uh, they, they used to tout that it was this, you know, extremely contagious, always fatal disease. I've noticed lately that they don't always, they don't always say that it's always fatal. Now they say a fatal disease. It's similar in ways to COVID in the sense that there were a lot of there was a lot of debate over some of the cases where people died and they had COVID. Well, did they die from COVID or did they die with COVID? So it's a little bit of semantics, but people will shoot a deer, get it tested, and oh, it's CWD positive. Okay. Well, was CWD fatal for that deer? No. The, the bullet was fatal for the deer. So how can they say it's always fatal? Anyway. Um, and there are also cases where the deer have gone, you know, several years with no symptoms. Uh, there was a case in Texas where a, uh, a breeder buck had been brought into a, a, a farm. I think it was like two years later I think that's right two years later it died got tested tested positive and uh, because of that they ended up euthanizing a bunch of deer hundreds of deer on this farm and then live testing everything that was left and of the I forget six or eight hundred deer on this facility that buck was the only one who tested positive so this extremely contagious disease this zombie deer disease. Uh, a, the buck showed no symptoms uh, up until shortly before he died. It was post rut, which is 
you know, the bucks are at their weak point. And the, the owner said he looked a little bit run down, but, you know, that's normal for a poster at buck. So that he showed symptoms, eh, it's hard to say. But he made it two years, bred a whole bunch of does, was around a bunch of other deer, and didn't pass on this this uh, front page publicated zombie deer disease. It's highly contagious. So that was one particular case. Um, another one that happened very recently, in the last couple of months, there's a research facility, a whitetail research facility owned by uh, the state of Texas. They had, and this has been going for almost 50 years, somewhere in the hill country. They had a young buck die. They, of course, tested it. The state lab tested it. It tested positive for CWD. In a, quote, abundance of caution, they depopulated the entire herd on the research facility. Now, they like to use the word depopulate because it sounds better than... Uh, massacred or uh, whatever just destroyed wasted the entire herd I think it was somewhere between 80 and 120 deer I read the number it's somewhere in there in a, in a research herd that had been in that program for almost 50 years talk about a resource just gone so one deer test positive they kill all the rest of them Guess how many more test positive? I'll give you a hint. Zero. And it gets worse. So the, the deer that the state tested, they sent the sample to the national lab. There's some acronym for it. It's in Ames, Iowa. Same place I send TB test for, for my deer. Guess what? Deer test negative. So in Texas, Wildlife and Parks Department's haste to, uh, you know, control this whole extremely contagious, always fatal zombie deer disease, they killed an, a 50-year-old research herd that had no CWD in it. So, the point of this video is, is twofold. One, piss poor journalism. Just gonna call it what it is. Which is very common in our, in our day. Uh, as most of you know. And then, of course, the twofold is a little bit of the unfortunate happenings around the actual world of CWD. Now, again, I'm not saying that it's not a thing or that it shouldn't be addressed, but I will say this. Very much like COVID, there's a lot of money floating around under the guise of chronic wasting disease management. A lot of money. So, you know, a state can be doing a small amount of work and receiving a large amount of money in compensation for that from the federal government, i.e. your pocket, my pocket. It's not all bad. Some states are handling it differently than others. But there is some bad out there. And there's a lot of deer getting killed over it. There's far more deer that have been killed under the guise of uh, CWD management than have been killed by actual CWD. I think that's a verifiable stat. I, I don't know how it couldn't be. I, there are several cases where the general uh, management strategy in Texas has been one positive animal means you depopulate the whole herd. And they've backed off a little bit because of live testing that's available that's uh, extremely invasive, expensive, cost near their lives because of the number of times they have to be handled they get tissue, live tissue removed from them while they're still alive from places I don't even want to mention. It's it's better than killing them and then testing them, but not by a lot. Um, anyway, 
right? A lot of deer being killed under the guise of CWD management. Even in the wild, I forget the term that they use, but they basically will will depopulate a, a population or an area uh, because it's had a positive case. The effectiveness of that is really kind of to be determined. I mean, you know, think about this for a second. If you have a population of deer, you have a population of whatever, a hundred white-tailed deer in this area, a hunter shoots one and tests positive, the state says, well, we're going to go in and shoot the other 99 deer. What do we gain from that? I'm sure there's cases where it's kept it from spreading. But they tell you that it can spread in the mud on your tires. If it can spread on the mud on the tires of your truck, I'm not sure that shooting the animals that were around the positive case, it just is a little strange. But there's lots of money in it. So um, circle this thing back around what this has to do with me and my deer. We, of course, have fallow deer. And a big reason for that is uh, there was a farm that sent some deer to I think where the original CWD case might have been might have been uh, studied in Colorado and they tried to give it to them. And they, the fallow deer don't get it. I don't know the science behind what the term get means. You know, there's prions and whatever. They don't get it. So, as from a deer farmer's management strategy, it's much easier because I don't have to deal with it. I mean, there's no risk of my animals testing positive and uh, having to kill them all. Now, that's not to say that, you know, you should be scared of white tail farming, but it is, it is a, a gateway animal, I guess you could you could say it's easier to manage doesn't get that disease so if you're wanting to stick your foot into the deer business that's a great way to do it it's a little less stressful um, anyway that's my rant for today it's just it just it just irritates me when people are stupid and stuff gets blown out of proportion see you later